Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Politics and Power. This is your girl, Dr. Avis, and I have around the table with me today some amazing leaders who will be discussing leadership. And so with that said, I'm going to go around the table and let everyone introduce themselves, starting with the amazing Helen Holton. Well, thank you, Dr. Avis. I'm yes. Dr. Helen Holton. I am an executive and leadership strengths coach of Dr. Helen Holton and Associates, and just honored to be here today to talk about how leadership impacts shifting the trajectory of your success forward. Wonderful. Thank you. And Laverne. Oh, greetings, and thank you so much for having me. I'm Laverne Beatty. I consider myself the secret sauce for leadership brilliance. Ooh, yeah. As the CEO of the Beatty Group, I work with organizational leaders and entrepreneurial leaders to help them create exceptional experiences for their customers. Love that. And Ms. Renee. Hello, and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Renee Frazier, MBA, and I am the founder of the Entrepreneurial Institute. And in that institute, we help people work holistically on personal and business development. Absolutely. So I'm just going to throw out a question, and it can be to anyone. So let's just jump in and have a convo. So when we talk about leadership, leadership is rife with responsibility, right? Uh, however, uh, whether or not you live up to that responsibility, there are certainly going to be impacts related to your action, your inaction, the quality of your action. So can you guys talk to me a little bit about that dynamic between responsibility and impacts and how we can make sure that we show up as a leader in a way that creates the positive outcomes that we're looking to create? Sure. Uh -huh. Do you want to start? Sure, I will. You know, as I coach executives on how to bring their best selves forward, one of the things is understanding who you are, what mm -hmm. your grade of strengths and talents are, and how you bring them forward. And once you know that, the data shows that you have three times more likely to have a higher quality of life mm -hmm. and six times more likely to be more engaged in your job and what you do as an executive, as a leader, and how you move into that. So it begins with owning who you are, knowing who you are, and how to show up as best you can. And executive coaching goes a long way to helping to shift the careers of many of my clients. Love that. That's great. I often encourage leaders to not get so caught up in your title. Mm. that you forget that it's about how you do what you do. Mm. It's about relationship and less about the power that you're trying to make others bow to. Wow. Or feel. That's mm. powerful right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. That, and that cannot be stressed enough. I, I think early in my career, being an entrepreneur, people thought, and I thought as well, that when I came to the table that I'm going to own the space because I'm an entrepreneur that I get to do, I get to tell you what to do. But the true sense of entrepreneurship is service mm -hmm. and also knowing for sure that you still serve a client. And so a lot of times my business has grown exponentially. I started doing business plans with folks and it changed because my clients didn't need me to give a piece of paper to them and say, here you go, ready, aim, fire. They really needed the personal touch that I brought to the space. And some of the, quite frankly, counseling and uh, uh, coaching that I, I really was offering but not labeling. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Yeah. So Lafren, I'm really interested to pull more out from you around this issue of, title versus how you show up in relationship with people in order to get the outcomes that you want. And I'm particularly interested in, is there a different dynamic when that, when that title is attached to a black woman versus a white male? Interestingly enough, regardless of what the titles are, we often see how people engage with us. And I'll speak from my experience as a black female executive in a Fortune 500 company in my past life. Speak that. But <laughs> I think, let's take a moment just to yeah, appreciate that. Exactly. The, it doesn't come the, lightly. The whole concept of assuming someone's going to give you the respect as a leader is a poor assumption. Mm. So depending on who you are and how you're positioned and the relationships you have, that dictates how people are going to regard and respect you as a leader, mm -hmm. which makes it incumbent, especially upon us as black women, to ensure we have the circles of support and champions around us yes. who are going to push for us when people just simply don't want us to be their leaders. Mm. It's critical to have that I have a professional advisory board. I have people I can talk with outside of organizations and inside of the organizations. 
because I know that as unfair as it might seem, this exterior inhibits how some people see my leadership effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference. And I have to, I have to piggyback on that in stating that when you're in the business world, a lot of times we like to think if I, if something is unfair, you want to get emotional. I go right to my MBA metrics and I'm like, okay, well, here's what the project management says. Here's the resources that you have. Here are the champions that you have. Here are the goals you want to create. And so I don't really make time for people to try to factor that into the equation because when you know your stuff and you're you're trying to serve the job like you said those things you 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 cannot help that you can only help how you show up well you know one of the things that I've found really interesting in the research around leadership and once again particular to black women is that oftentimes we are definitely the most ambitious in terms of Mm -hmm. wanting that next uh, promotion however sometimes some research suggests that we are a little bit less risk uh Um, Mm -hmm. brave Mm -hmm. as other people are. We tend to be a little risk averse because there's so much on the line for us in terms of our success. We're such Mm -hmm. an anchor in our families, in our community. How can we manage that risk versus reward dynamic in order to maximize our career possibilities? I think some of it comes from just the knowing yourself, first of all, but that real leadership requires taking risk, Mm. but it's calculated risk that we need to learn to take. And that's where creating that tribe, that community of other leaders like you to be able to bounce ideas off of, and this is where coaching, particularly executive and leadership coaching comes into play, Mm -hmm. is helping us do what we do best from a posture of strength and not weakness, not fear, understanding that when we are really deeply rooted in who we are, we're much more confident about what we bring forward. And it's not about us as much as it is about addressing what it is we're looking to shift, Mm -hmm. what we're looking to move forward in order to accomplish goals, dreams, whatever they may be in that environment with you as the leader. When you empower others, you actually are helping to develop their leadership. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the greatest rewards of being a leader, of replicating what you know how to do and teaching, mentoring, coaching others how to step into that role for themselves. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the, on the heels of that with the risk risk is very real and so if we do not choose to face it then we are going to be subject to it and so uh to your point Laferne, to have the 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 wisdom and counsel of advisors that eradicates some of the risk because if i'm just listening to um Craig and them on the street, then I should I should be afraid, <laughs> yes. right? So you should be afraid. Craig and them don't know. Craig what and talking them about. don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> They've been on the streets for like for years. <laughs> if that's the advice you're taking, you won't be leading long. That, that, <laughs> but we also have to deal with how we sometimes feel like we have to have a hundred and ten percent. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So until I am absolutely completely ready. Yeah. then I don't put myself in the position for the opportunity. Right. Mm-hmm. When most other folks are coming in with maybe what, 60. What, 10%? Maybe. <laughs> maybe Girl, 60. Right. Yes. And so having exactly. people who are around us who will say, you know what, go for it. Yes. Stop being shy about it. Go package yourself with excellence. With excellence. And then move forward without 100%. Because that's how we fall behind. And yes. also n- recognizing the season. Because as we're building through your wonderful mentorship, when we're building – we should expect chaos. Yeah. Like we cannot build onto the next level staying where we are. Uh, even a seed has to bust through the shell and become something totally different. But there's a busting through of the shell that That's happens. True. So we have That's to recognize That's the clarity that. in the chaos. Exactly. You know, it really is. And you have to be willing to take the risk. But as Laferne said, having those trusted advisors and those people that you look and aspire to be where they are, not like them, but to look at the trajectory of how they've Mm -hmm. come up through the ranks to become leaders that are revered, sought sought after, and just live in that space of being identified as a leader. I'm glad you said that, Helen, because I often say, don't fake it until you make it. That's right. Model it until you master it. Girl, Get yes. some folks around you who can help you present yourself in a way right. where people will look at you and say, she can be, she mm-hmm. will be, she has the potential to be. That's who we can be when we show up as leaders. So, Absolutely. Dr. Avis, I'm just going to share with you your comments of beta now, better later. Yeah. Yes. And so sometimes you need to throw out there and test what you believe is going to be the next step to get you where you want to go. doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're sitting there waiting to get it 100% complete of how you envision it being, you may miss the boat. 
That's right. And we don't have time to miss any more boats. We None. sure don't. It's time to be at the helm. <laughs> you believe me? Absolutely. 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 So thanks for joining me this time on Politics and Power with Dr. Avis. Look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Thank <music> you.